<laughs> Sorry, mom. What's happening, guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, we're gonna be working on my Nissan 370Z. Now, this install is gonna be really directed towards anyone that has a 370Z and a G37. Now, the reason why that is is because the radiator and the AC condenser, both of those components are actually built into one in these cars. In order to change out the radiator or the AC condenser, both systems need to be drained and evacuated of all the fluids. So, I already went ahead and brought my car to the dealership. I got them to take out all the R134A. The reason why I did that is so that I could take everything else out here at home, do it all here, and then get it refilled tomorrow. In today's video, I'm gonna be changing out my stock rad and AC condenser, and I'm gonna be replacing it with an upgraded Mishimoto one. The main reason why I'm changing it out is because I wanna see some decreased coolant temps. When I take my car to the racetrack, or even if I'm driving it on the street on a hot day, those coolant temps go through the roof. If you're just cruising around, you're not beating on the car, you're not really going to have an issue. But even after changing out my thermostat for a Mishimoto lower temperature one, I still have the same problem. The problem is that the car is making too much heat and it can't shed it off fast enough. So I'm gonna get started by taking off the front bumper and the lower splash shield so I can get access to the important parts. Let's get started. Now while that down there is draining, we're gonna be taking off the front crash bar, we're gonna be taking all this foam out, we're gonna be taking all of the stuff up here off of the car so that we can get access to the rad and the AC condenser which is found back here. So there's a bunch of plastic clips that are up here, there's a bunch of intakes that are here in the way. These are aftermarket, these shouldn't be an issue taking them out, but we're just taking one part out at a time. So with the car now in this state, you can pretty much see that we have almost complete access to the radiator and the AC condenser. Now the next thing that we need to do is just disconnect the AC dryer that's found on the passenger side of the car. And then we have to disconnect the lines that are going to and from the AC condenser that are found on this side. Now last but not least, once we get those done, the only thing that's going to be connecting anything up to these two components here are going to be the upper and then found below is going to be the lower rad hoses. Once you disconnect those, we should in theory be able to take the entire thing out. So let's get started with the pieces over here. Now because I replaced these hoses a while back, these hoses now have different clamps on them. So you can see right here that they are held together with just some gear clamps. I'm using a flathead screwdriver to just loosen both the upper rad hose and then what's going to be the lower rad hose found on the other side afterwards. I'm just gonna be taking each one of these things off, sliding them off of the clamps, and then this should in theory, should disconnect everything going to and from the rad. Next up comes the easy stuff. So we just need to twist off the tops of the radiator right here. So these basically hold it into Brace across. Now with each one of these locks here loose, so you just turn these clockwise, or counterclockwise to loosen them up. With both of them, one 
and two removed. The way that the rad comes out is you have to lift it up a little bit and then the bottom of it swings out and then you can pull the rest of it out. Now keep in mind if you guys have any other coolers up front, so a power steering cooler right here or an oil cooler, you would have to disconnect those because anything that's down here and in the way is going to be a problem. So lucky for me it's only two bolts, two 10 mils, one there and one there. Unbolt this and I'll be able to swing the entire rad out once that's done. So the bottom comes out first. Take note of the AC lines that are found on this side. And then we should be able to slide this right out. So here we have both radiators outside of the car. Both the AC condenser and rads are built into one for the OEM unit. And you can see this here is the aftermarket Mishimoto piece. So you can tell that this here is definitely a lot thicker than this unit here. So taking a look at this entire thickness, this here measures up at 41 millimeters, which is both the rad and the AC condenser in one. Now if we take a look at this one here, this total size is 62 millimeters, where the rad itself, the core, is 42. So this entire cooling system for the, for the AC and for the heating system, this entire thing is only as efficient as just the rad here, let alone the extra AC condenser that we have up front. So this is gonna make a really big difference when we beat on our car and we get that coolant super hot. Now, not only that, there are also some other differences. So you can see that there's some plastic and there's some aluminum, where on the Michi unit, it is entirely aluminum, and you can see that this is also TIG welded. I gotta say, it looks pretty damn good if you ask me. Now on the back side, you can see that this here is the, the upper part of the rad. This is the coolant neck. So this neck right here is made out of plastic. On the Michi unit, you can see it's fully aluminum. This is definitely gonna be a really nice upgrade. Now all of these Mishimoto products come with a lifetime warranty. So should you have an issue, which in that rare chance, you know, whatever happens, you guys are covered. So it doesn't really matter what it is, you guys are good for life. If you guys wanna find links to Michi products, you guys can find some in the description box. But we first need to transfer over the AC dryer from the OEM setup onto the new one. Now there's only gonna be one, one 10 mil bolt on the bottom side holding it in place, and there's gonna be two lines, one going in, one going out, um, that bolts up. It's pretty straightforward, there's nothing really crazy to it. The install shouldn't be that complicated comparing it to the disassembly. If anything, the disassembly is gonna be more complicated and more uh, stressful. Um, if I run into anything crazy, I'll let you guys know, but this here is what the car looks like with everything removed. So we have the rat out, the cooler down here for the power steering, this is the upgraded one, that had to be moved out of the way. Um, the intakes, I was able to leave them in, however, if you guys can, maybe take them out, it might make it a little bit easier. If you guys can move everything here out of the way, um, it will make removing the radiator easier. Uh, but knock on wood, everything goes smoothly with the, with the reassembly. All right guys, so I got some good news and bad news. Good news is I have all this mounted up. That's all tight. This is in there good. Fitment looks good. Now the issue that I'm having is found down here. Now this here is an aftermarket still in power steering cooler. Now the issue is that because the rad and the AC condenser are a lot thicker, it actually pushed out how much space I have back here. So I don't have this bolted up yet. This is just like kind of hand tight. And this is basically backed up right up against the radiator. So I'm gonna have to probably make a different little bracket down here so that I can push this out maybe like another, I don't know, half an inch. Maybe I'll even just slide this up one bolt. But um, right now the way it is, it doesn't exactly work. But I'm gonna continue putting all this stuff back together and I'll figure something else out for the power steering cooler. All right guys, so it's getting pretty late. It's 332, the same amount of horsepower this car came with stock. Um, yeah, I'm starting to get tired. But we have the entire front of the car basically back together. All I need to do is put on um, the lower splash shield along with the front bumper. Um, that basically there will pretty much complete this entire install. So I have the rad in there. All I need to do next is just bleed the system and then I can take the car out for a spin tomorrow, go drive it and see how this thing is. Um, I wouldn't exactly call this an easy install. There's a lot of parts that have to come off the car and you have to be very finicky and you have to definitely keep track of what goes where when you take it off. Um, the difficulty, the entire job, I would definitely consider this, you know, definitely top tier because you have to drain the AC system, you have to drain the coolant system, you need to refill it all, you need to re-bleed it, and you need to take out the rad and put the new one in. The whole front of the car basically came off um, and to put it all back together, you have to basically do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna bleed this with my speed bleeder. If you guys wanna see how I use this, you guys can find another link in the description box. But I'm gonna catch up with you guys soon 
once this is all good to go, with it down to the ground and we can go drive it. All right, so back there, I was beating on the car a little bit. Let's call it maybe six tenths. Um, I wouldn't quite say that I was beating on it as hard as I could. Now, with that being said, the oil temps that I'm seeing right now are at about 85 degrees Celsius, and the coolant temps are at 72. So it's not too bad considering the upgraded thermostat, or the lower temp thermostat, is in here and it's set to 68 degrees Celsius. Now that also is from Mishimoto. The thermostat and the rad are keeping the temps down because before, I used to have temperatures that would go a lot higher than this. So if I'm cruising, the, the temperatures would stay around 70 degrees-ish. That's if I'm not pushing on, if I'm not doing any hard acceleration. Um, now the coolant, when it gets up to operating temperature and then you start beating on it, I got the coolant up to 76 degrees. Now this is Celsius with an 18 degree ambient temperature outside. Now when you go to the racetrack, that is a totally different story. If you are continually beating on your car and beating on it and beating on it, you're gonna be getting those temps well above that 70 degree mark. Now that's where the stock radiator isn't allowing well, any heat or any more heat to be shed off. So the engine is producing more heat than the radiator can get rid of. Now with that being said, with this Mishimoto one, you're not gonna have that same problem. So I have the AC charged back up inside the car. The AC works as it should. Everything works like a normal Nissan, except for the fact that I can beat on it more and I won't have to worry about the coolant temps going through the roof. If you guys want to find any of the products or tools that I used in this video, you guys can find some more links in the description box. By you guys buying those links and purchasing it from there, uh, it makes a little bit of money on my end, which means I can make videos like this for you guys. Now, on the note of keeping stuff cold, the coolant temps right now are a lot cooler, which is great because of the upgraded Mishimoto thermostat and radiator. Now, the next problem that I need to address regarding heat is going to be the oiling system. The oil in this car, when you beat on it, it goes through the roof. There's a gauge that's found inside these Zs um, that'll tell you what the temperature of your coolant and oil temperature is. Now the oil temps, if you're driving your car on a hot day and you're beating the crap out of it, the oil temps go through the roof. So that's why I also have an upgraded Mishimoto thermostatic oil cooler that's gonna be going inside my Z and it's gonna be able to keep those temps down too. That video is to come. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.